Hey, I want to welcome you all back to Elevated Inspiration. And basically what we're going to do today is we're going to be talking about sharing love. So let me pull up the slides and we're going to get started um, with this presentation. Okay, sharing love. Basically, um, um, this is, um, we're still in our love series and we're going to be talking about um, the book of Acts. So when you get into the book of Acts, I want you to notice that um, Luke actually write the gospel of Luke, and he also write uh, the book of Acts. Luke is more, the gospel of Luke is more talking about the life of Christ, um, his, uh, from his birth to his crucifixion. But when you get into Acts, it's more talking about the early church and how with the early Christian was able to take that message uh, across um, and to the point where we are today. So they give us concrete example. So if you notice the second paragraph there, we look to Acts to better understand the nature of the church and its emphasis. So we know that preaching the good news was all about, but yet and still it endures ridicule, doubters, and persecution. And we're going to see that. And you'll see that as you read through the book of Acts. So, but we're going to focus on um, the the second, the fourth chapter. So let's look at here. I underlined some things here. So in the fourth chapter, we're looking at generosity being exercised. Notice here, it says the unity of purpose, that they all came together. They had one uh, common mind, one heart, one soul, showing how they were intermingled together. Neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. So that's a key verse there. But then we go down and we look at verse 35. And they lay, they sold things, verse 34 and, and uh, 33. They, they sold their land. They sold their possession. They brought it all. They distributed amongst everyone that had a need. Notice third, uh, verse 35, they laid them at the apostle feet, distribute, distribution was made to every man according to as he had need. But I want you to really to focus on verse 36. This is Joseph. This is a unique way of spelling it. This is actually Barnabas. And they give him a definition. His name, Joseph, the son of consolation. He's a Levite, so it describes what he is. And you notice in the Old Testament how the Levitical priesthood has certain roles in the church. But he is actually from the country of Cyprus. Cyprus is an island located off in the Mediterranean Sea, off the coast of Syria. So it says, he having land, he sold it, and he brought the money, and he laid it to the apostle feet. So this is unique. When I think of Barnabas, I think about David and the stewardship and the heart that David had. Even when God told him not to build a temple, he in turn prepared for the building of that temple for his predecessor, son Solomon, to actually build. So Barnabas, we see him later joining uh, Paul. He was one of the men that accepted Paul because Paul persecuted the church, and they went together on missionary journey. So, but notice the example of giving by Barnabas here in this verse. So, I want to ask you a couple questions here. So, the question is that we're going to discuss on Sunday, why was communion given and less essential for Jews in the early church? Why was communion given Less and correction, I'm sorry. Why was communion given and living essential for Jews in the early church? And then trustworthy leaders, why is that so important in the early church? So we're going to discuss that on Sunday. So the next question that we're going to discuss is what positive and descriptive nickname would you would like to have with regard to the service for Christ. And if you notice throughout the scripture, um, sometimes individual name change. Remember, Saul was changed to Paul. Even in the Old Testament, um, the, the name, um, uh, I'm trying to, Israel, uh, his name wasn't Israel, um, Trickster. 
um, I can't think right now. My mind just went blank. <laughs> um, um, oh boy, uh, Jacob, I'm sorry. Whoo, man, my, my mind went blank. Uh, God changed his name from Jacob to Israel. Wow. Okay, for some reason, I couldn't think of that. All right, so I have, I have a, I know this is a lot of scripture here, but just quickly, we're going to go through this. Here's a deception, and you know the story with Ananias and Sapphira, uh, how they prepared in the heart to actually, um, he prepared to, they was going to sell a possession, but notice here, that says it kept by part of the price, and his wife also being private to it, brought a certain poor and laid it to the apostle feet. So this is unique here because they prepared in their heart, okay, we're going to sell everything. Even though we're supposed to give it, we're not going to give it. We're going to keep, keep a portion to, to ourselves. So what actually happened? You see here uh, in the next verses, um, Paul questioned Ananias and he actually, it says that he lied. Um, unto not only men, but he lied to God. Um, when he hear those words, Ananias actually fell down and he died. And then about three hours later, uh, Sapphira came and notice what Apostle Paul said in the eighth verse, um, correction, Peter says in the eighth verse, says, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yea, for so much. And then what happened to her? She falls down and she dies also because Peter says in the next verse, um, then she fell straight down uh, at his feet and yielded up the whole, the ghost. Um, and a young man came and found her dead body and carried her away. So we see a deception here and deception that they prepared in their heart that we're, we're going to sell everything, but we're not going to give it all. We're going to keep a portion for ourselves. So in this sense here, this scripture here is showing us kind of like the opposite of what Barnabas did, where he sold everything and gave it, where these two individuals decided to keep a portion of it for themselves. All right, so why do you think Ananias and Sapphira lied? Why was this lie so serious? And then the next question is, does the Holy Ghost respond to lies or hypocrisy in the church today as he did in the early church? Why or why not? We're going to discuss that in depth on Sunday. And this question right here, how does this lesson cause you to rethink your own given pattern? And now I want you to look at two verses again in Luke 3 and 11 and 18 and 22 and show how those verses can help you answer the question. So I want to end with this right here, an encouraging word. Faith and fraud cannot coexist. Faith and fraud cannot coexist. This honesty within the church can destroy it and must be dealt with severely. When we yield our hearts to the Spirit, we know that he sees our deeds and blesses them. Hey, this has been great, you all. Um, my last slide is give you something as a thought to remember. This spirit works powerful in the church. Hey, I see you on our Zoom session on Sunday. Uh, I got the date wrong there. It's not November 11th, but it's going to be November 22nd at 6 p.m., uh, the meeting ID is 642-382-0755, and that's the passcode. Remember now, I want you to think, how does this lesson cause you to rethink your own given pattern? Hey, it's been great, you all. I sure appreciate it.